In this lecture, we're going to see how we can deserialize the products that we obtained in our last lecture and how we could able to work with all those types much, much easily. So if you can see our code for the deserialization in our token last time, you see that for the authorization to get the token, we actually created a concrete type like authenticate, something like this. Instead of doing it using the concrete class type, in C Sharp, they introduce what is called as a record type, which I have covered in my C Sharp advanced series in YouTube, which is available for free. A separate playlist, you can go ahead and watch there for the record type, especially in the context of API testing I have covered there. And the same exact thing, we can do it here as well in this particular video. I'll tell you what I really mean. So basically, you can just change from the class type to a record type, something like this. And then you also don't have to create an auto implemented properties, something like this. Rather, you can just pass it as a constructor parameter by just simply giving it as a tokens. So the token can be something like this. So this is pretty much similar to how you define the class type, but just that this is going to be a record type. That is the only major difference between it. And the authenticate, because it's going to be just used within this particular unit test 1.cs file, we can also make this as private as you can see here. And there is this record type already been created for us, which is great. And now you can use this record type pretty much like how you did use for the concrete type as well. There is no big difference between it. You can in fact move this particular two braces uh, over here. There you go. That is the way that we can use the record types in the C sharp world, which is going to make the exact same thing. So if I run the unit test for I, uh, I need to run the application. And now if I go to unit test, and if I run it once again, you will see that the test has got passed. So this is the record type thing that I was talking about. And we can use the same idea even here to deserialize the object for the products. So let's say how we can able to do it. So we can go to the actual product type, like how the application I have defined for the product. You can see that for the product, I have used this product with a collection of the components and then the product types over here. Uh, and similarly, there is a components over here, which is also a class type, something like this. There are two ways we can actually come around with this particular problem. Either we can go and create a record type within our class file over here in the testing environment, or there is a much, much better way of doing it in C-sharp world. You can use dependency injections if you really need it, or you can also just refer the project that you are working with to get the models so that you don't really have to reinvent the wheel of rewriting the whole things for you over here. Basically, this GraphQL product app project is living within the same solution of the Playwright API test as well. And it is also very important to note that the test should live along with the application under test because the more closer your test lives with your application, the more it is tested and testable. So with the same philosophy in our place, we already have all our tests sitting pretty close to the application under test. Now we can also do the reference so that if the type changes on the application, the same is going to be applicable for our test as well, which is great. This is a great news. So we don't have to keep looking at if the properties of the product, which is the GraphQL product app has been changed or not, since we are referencing the application under test itself. So I can now go and add a reference to the GraphQL product app, something like this, and I can just hit add. That really adds the reference to the GraphQL product app. And now for the deserialization part, I don't really have to write a record type or a concrete type over here. Rather, we can just call the product type over here itself. What I really mean, we can just do this var of the product is equal to, and because we have the data here, I can just do data dot value dot, you remember the deserialize option, the code that we wrote even before for the authentication, same code over here. And I'm gonna call the product. And as you can see, the IDE is much intelligent enough to tell me that you're looking for the GraphQL product app dot data thingy. Yes, that's the product I'm looking for. So you can deserialize it. This way, now I got the type over here. 
And because this data is something that you need to use the conditional access, you could do it over here as well, which is great. So now that we have the product type and the whole response, the JSON response that you saw, the big response of the JSON could be deserialized over here. And once we deserialize it, we can also, once again, mention the new JSON serialization option with all these problems that we mentioned, which is going to be property name case instance due as true. Let me clean the code, which is great. And now we can do an assertions here. So I can just do a product dot. And do you see that because now we have deserialized the whole response to a product type, we also get all the properties of that type in C-sharp, which is great. So now I can say that if I go and get the product of one, then the name should be keyboard if I'm not wrong. So I need to type the keyboard there. And this is the assertion part. And once again, it's gonna be a conditional access. So if you go to the browser, uh, for the first product, the name is keyboard as you can see here. So we will see if that is going to happen really. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here and the get product. I'm going to debug the unit test. And you can see that the product type this time has got all the values we're looking for. So there are two components in the array type. It's completely deserialized. And similarly, there is a name as keyboard. That's a price 150, product ID is one. And the product type is a peripherals. The value is two because you can see that it's an enum type. Even the enum type is being deserialized, which is great. So everything is coming up. And now with our assertions in place, the name should be keyboard is going to pass eventually because the value is being deserialized and that's working for us as expected. So this is the way we could able to deserialize with the actual type, which is the product type from the application and then use it within our code.